the play, funny thing is play. that we could have used those same protocols. We could have done barbells and strength tr- and uh, machines, and still made those people stronger just by just by increasing the load every time they do it on the right. fucking machine. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, they didn't even get that part right. No, no, and, and but but it's no Nick. It's even worse than that. You don't know what they did. Yeah. You have no we idea what they did. We can safely assume they that did. they did not add weight every time they were there. I mean, they I, just said it themselves, right? They didn't because yeah. they said after three weeks we added weight to the. We added weight again. Two minutes. Intensity was increased throughout the program once the subject was able to complete their required repetitions. Yeah, so good form. Th- this two. ties rip. This ties into the they, conversation we had last the last podcast on first. They don't even understand the first principles. They don't understand physiology and adaptation. Like they're looking, they're trying to determine if there was a strength adaptation, but they're not applying a strength stress. Right. So again, just same thing we talked about last time. It's not even worth discussing with these motherfuckers. They don't know have any idea. They don't have the experience, if, and they don't even have the base of knowledge from a fundamental principles perspective. If they don't understand how important the five pounds of workout is, then how do you have a conversation it's with exactly them about right. it? You are at the same time measuring and producing an adaptation right at the same time with the same intervention you are measuring and producing the adaptation yeah and and you could frame it as just a simple question ask one ask the the lead person ask him how are you how what stress are you applying and what 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 adaptation are you trying to achieve and okay so there we go we're trying to get him stronger so how are you applying that stress and he wouldn't be able to tell you Right, he would just rattle off a bunch of gibberish, and he, he'd be completely wrong. He doesn't even understand it on that on the on the most basic level. Shit, all workouts this is took how they're place fucked. in our university's fitness center, where fully qualified exercise professionals, that is, uh, Canadian Society for Exercise Physiology certified exercise physiologists, because <laughs> that's how it's pronounced. It's physiology in Canada. Or certified personal trainers were available to provide assistance during the workouts. Over the eight weeks, there were 38 training sessions. Therefore, with the split body program, each muscle group was trained over 19 sessions. All right, then the statistical analysis of the data, which is extremely interesting since the data was not presented <laughs> in the paper. And... Uh, the uh, ratio of the squat, bench press, strength. All right, the all right, the the ratios. I've kind of highlighted some of this stuff, but this is getting too tedious to even deal with. Nobody got stronger. <laughs> right. Is is you know the ratios between the bench and the squat stayed the same. The ratios between body weight and those two exercises stayed about the same. And there just wasn't a hell of a lot of anything that actually took place here of any interest. Uh, all right, now back to the hormone intervention. Tukey's post hoc analyses uh, indicated that only the free weight training men significantly increased free testosterone from before to after workouts. There was no significant change in free cortisol at any time point for either sex or training group. So cortisone didn't change because nothing was hard. Right. Right? Because when you get real beat up cortisol always goes up yep all right but there was only the free weight training men significantly increased free testosterone from before to after workouts ooh, and ooh. as i've already explained that's irrelevant right because it is not a chronic elevation because you are recovering ladies and gentlemen from a heavy workout for 48 to 72 hours this is if you're a novice and it's longer than that if you're an intermediate or advanced trainee for much longer than just the time from before to after the workout. And nobody has ever shown a chronic elevation in testosterone after a heavy workout. It is always an acute elevation of testosterone, which means that other mechanisms are at play in terms of the increase in testosterone. And if you were going to elevate testosterone as a result of heavy training and show measurable chronic elevations in in the 
in in serum testosterone, free testosterone levels, then nobody would ever overtrain, would they? Join us again this week on Starting Strength Radio. We are going to do uh, kind of a, kind of a dangerous thing. We're going to actually look at the science, specifically the science of exercise physiology, and more generally, the science as brought to you by the narrative. It's an interesting show. I promise you'll like it. We'll see you this time on Starting Strength Radio.